catch anybody yet. I, mean, I would have to book the chief, and our chief is just brand new. We just got another one. So, I mean, a third, a second one within the year, or? Uh, we had Gene Cooney, so it's number three. We had Gene Cooney, uh -huh. then we had uh, Gene McLaughlin, who was also the VA patient advocate, in case some of you are familiar with the name. And then uh, now we have uh, Ellen, she's only been there since Monday, so I forget her last name. <laughs> But I'm more than one back. She came from uh, orthopedics. She was in charge of the orthopedic department, and now she's up there. She's my boss upstairs. So she went from the third floor to the fourth floor. Um, yeah, I was thinking. Um, I know I kind of I tried to talk fast, not to take too much of your time, but also I don't want to be remiss if you have any questions or uh, anything that I didn't cover. Joe? Um, I'll, I know I spoke very quickly over the Fisher House, poor Joe is in the dark, as the rest of us are. Um, what we are is, uh, Joe and I are on the uh, board of directors for the Fisher House. Um, I am the secretary, the uh, chairman of the board, or the president of the board, is Mike Sabo. He was a uh, Vision 3 director, so he's a medical director uh, that's retired, he's gone into he retired from the VA and went into private, private industry, private, not private practice, private industry, because he's working. Um, so we formulate a board, we have full membership of the board. Unfortunately, we really haven't done anything because nothing's really happened on the other side. But we, unfortunately, we have a lot more questions than we have answers for you folks. Um, I know that the director grabbed me on Wednesday three different times. I think the first time was 8.30 when I was trying to get a cup of coffee. Uh, then he, he caught me in the cafeteria. He caught me in the hallway later on uh, during the course of the day. And then uh, I finally gave him an answer that I went back to the director and said, sir, at no expense to the government, at no expense to anybody, I am personally going down to Washington to get you some answers. Because he is, him as a director of the VA Medical Center has no answers. Mm. So hopefully I'll be able to rectify that and come back to you folks equally as well and uh, give you. He's getting lumped up from unions. He, you know, there's nurses, there's uh, all the staff, the union staff. He's getting lumped up from them over the parking. He's getting lumped up by veterans that walk in over the parking. You know, everybody's beating him up about parking. <clears throat> and rightfully so, I get it. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have an answer. So hopefully I'll come back with one uh, at least for the next meeting. We appreciate it. We appreciate your volunteer work and all the guys in the, uh, especially from the Coney Post, the field board guys over there. We also have Jewish war veterans over there. Um, and thank you very much for your work and keeping an eye on this. We have uh, DEV. DEV yeah. was represented there. Yes, Chapter 23. Um, Practical the organizations. Uh, Jewish war vet, you mentioned. Uh, American Legion and DEV. I think that's it as far as as far as veteran organizations. And you are on four, I'll get this right here. Four C. Four B as a boy. See, I told you. Four B. Fifty-three. Five three. So I'll get that volunteer back. service. There's a big size of chapters volunteers that way. So if you have a problem, um, go on up there. That could be really appreciated. And I, obviously I'll recruit any of you here that would like to be a volunteer at the VA hospital. You're more than welcome to come to four B fifty-three. Uh, and you go through a mild process. The process consists of a uh, background check. They're gonna run your fingerprints, uh, a blood test for TB, to make sure you don't, you know, you're not exposing our veterans, right. our, our patients, because it's still a medical facility. And I forget what the third part was. Uh, fingerprints, blood test, and orientations. I'm sorry, three, three parts. Uh, you can volunteer at any of the uh, departments within the hospital at the orientation. You, you, you state your preference. They probably they try to make an effort to slot you where you want to go. Um, then there's also sub programs. For example, uh, I am uh, running one of the programs within the hospital. It's called No Veteran Alone. And what I match is I match uh, volunteers uh, with veterans that don't get frequent visitors. We have veterans like you mentioned in the nursing home. Somebody mentioned the nursing home. We have the nursing home uh, where we're predominantly working right now. But if we do get a patient, let's say transferred from uh, Orange, West Orange, or 
outpatient transfer from Philly, which we've had, you know, in cases that we could offer maybe more uh, medical assistance. You know, he's not going to get a, a regular daily visit, so maybe once a week by one of us coming in makes all the difference in the world to these guys. I know I've talked very fast, I tried to cover everything. Uh, I try not to take a bunch of your time, but do you have any other questions? Great, thank you all very much. We see the news a lot, we see criticism and right and so of some things that are going on in the VA system. Um, so that you know, the VA in the Bronx is doing amazing things. They have what's called a wee walk, we wear it, and it easily sticks, and you press the button. And this guy who's been in the wheelchair looking out the window watching his kids play, he presses his button and goes, Geez. I was making noises now, in the future maybe, Ooh. but he gets up and he can actually move and walk and get out of that wheelchair and get down the corner store. Mm. Uh, that's in the frustration department against him. Also, the robotic hand. It's a robotic hand, it attaches, and you can actually. So, the Bronx VA is at the forefront of a lot of stuff, especially the kidney transplant. Uh, which is going to be something good. Um, about the golf carts, uh, yeah, you can't just say, here's the golf cart, drive them. Uh, I can handle the fleet for my job, and you have to have a policy. And after the policy, you have to have a train. Mm -hmm. And that's the sign. You have to go through this whole, this whole thing. You can't, just, you can't just drive. You have to have a, this liability. Um, so once they get that you know, straightened out, I think that's a great service. And thank you for remembering Brendan. Brendan Devine was. Yep. Um, yeah, he, he wants us for a long time. Joe Bell, I think, seriously? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You always care, buddy. So I'll try to be quick as well. Uh, a couple of things just to follow up on um, Fisher House. So uh, Metro Focus actually did a, a uh, TV thing recently, on, uh, and um, they talked about it. They interviewed Ken Fisher. He talked about what it's about, what it's supposed to do. So um, I sent the link, and I can certainly send it to you, and you can put it out the email if anybody's interested in seeing that. Uh, I myself have been invited. Uh, the Orlando Fisher House just opened up on uh, Valentine's Day, so I was invited to check that out. So I'm planning on doing that next week, just to take some pictures and see what the Fisher House looks like from the inside. Um, in terms of um, just to follow up on the exoskeleton, so there has been talk at the Bronx VA about having actually a building on that side as well, and there has been initial discussions if they, there is a move towards a grant, at some point having to at least consider the possibility because of the loss of all the parking space to actually build like a you know, three-story parking garage or right. something. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but it has been discussed about so it's something to know as well. Um, uh, as far as um, the MTA, I'll just follow up and I can tell you as a member of the Veterans Advisory Board, we had a meeting with the uh, Commissioner of Veterans Services as well as uh, some elected officials and others. Um, the problem seems to be uh, buy-in from CUNY and from other colleges, which I understand that the gentleman is working on. HP is working on. Yeah, it's HP is working on. So um, that's one of the issues, the other issues as well, uh, stems more to a political side. As everybody knows, the governor and the mayor consistently fight about who controls the MTA and you know all the monies and the infrastructure. And so you know the focus seems to get taken away. You know when we get to those kind of conversations, but it's still a worthy cause. It's still something that you know they push for and we'll see if it happens. Um, you know we're just we're just not getting any. I would tell you from the Veterans Advisory Board, we're not getting any positive feedback that that's going to happen in the near future. So we'll have to see how that goes. Particularly as the state budgets, um, I think they're running a $4 billion deficit this coming around. So I mean, that's kind of part of the conversation as well. And you know, what is what will be the will of the legislature moving forward when they get to the budget? And just to clarify one thing which, which Joe's talking about, Joe is taking you know, Joe's coming from the uh, Veterans and by, uh, Advisory. I'm sorry, Veteran Department of Veteran Services. You know, from the city. Mm -hmm. You know, coming coming that way. And I'm I don't know if you caught that. I'm coming state through state. Yeah. So I'm pushing a state issue, a kind of state track. HP and Joe is coming from the city side. 
So hopefully we meet at the middle and wind up with a yeah. successful outcome. I mean, HP has done, has uh, spoken to CUNY. Mm -hmm. In fact, they had the meeting that I was at, and you know there was a, a push. Uh, we don't know what happened with it because it was the first meeting of the new year for them as well. So everybody was kind of like, okay, so where was it at? And nobody seemed to know. So the, the director, university director, is going to follow up. Like, okay, what colleges are sending veterans to those those empty okay. hearings in the future? So that's how that's going. Um, in terms of the Veterans Advisory Report, I can tell you uh, we put out our annual report. We do this annually. We are required by the law to meet five times uh, a year, and we have to meet in each borough. So in, uh, in January, we met in Brooklyn. Our next meeting will be April 11th in Staten Island. Uh, I don't know when our Bronx meeting is, but I think it's in September. So again, that's part of, we, we have to go to every borough. Uh, through the year, and that's what we'll do. But our annual report is out, and that's an annual report we have to give to the mayor and to the speaker and the city council, and uh, we're required to do that as well. Uh, you can find that report on the uh, uh, Department of Veterans Services website if you're interested in seeing it. One of the things we talk about is, uh, you know, uh, veterans on campus initiatives and supporting veterans and on a couple of legislative fronts as well. So uh, you can take a look at it at your leisure and you'll see where it goes from there. Uh, in terms of the, one of the other things is I am the co-chair of the VA's CVET, which is a community veterans uh, engagement board. And on that board, we actually have uh, all the hospital directors, as well as the regional director and the cemetery director. So we meet, uh, we meet quarterly, and we are putting together a um, housing uh, the, like, so one of the things that's come out a couple of years ago, there was an article in the New York Times about how hard it is for veterans to use their benefits to buy a house yeah. in New York City, and how like most realtors hmm. don't understand the process, they don't know what, what how to do it or anything. So um, on the CVEB, we finally have, we're going to hold at some I think it's going to be in April, we don't have a date yet, but I certainly will keep you informed, where we're going to do what the VA offers in terms of home loans and what everything that they do. So that's going to be coming from the, the CVEB and the regional office. Uh, right now, they're looking to hold it at the Manhattan VA Hospital because they want it somewhat centralized to the five boroughs. Um, again, we're, we're working on it right now. Um, they always talk about bringing realtors in, bringing all, but they decided against it. They want to just keep it to where we're only going to uh, address like what the VA does, what's the process, you know, what are the benefits, and things of that nature. Give everybody a primer, a pristine primer of what the VA offers in terms of home loans and, and all of that good stuff. So uh, definitely, as that comes, I'll definitely send more information about that. And uh, oh yeah, oh the last thing. So the city council's preliminary budget is in full swing. And um, the Veterans Committee is having their preliminary budget uh, next week. Um, the sense is uh, the mayor has asked for budget cuts across all the agencies, say 2%. Uh, we do not believe that they're going to cut the Department of Veterans Services because um, it's new, it's only into its second budget, and the commissioner is actually still growing the department. You know, they, they, in fact, they're still hiring a few other people, and so we're expecting that the administration will hold the line. Now, will that change in the executive budget and then when they have the executive hearing? Uh, no, but for right now, we're, our expectation from the Veterans Advisory Board and others is that um, DVS will still, you know, get the, will get the funding that they're supposed to get. Now, in terms of any other veterans initiatives, one of the things that we're fighting for <clears throat> is if you own a non-for-profit, you're a veteran non-for-profit, uh, VSO, and you're getting any money from the city in the Schedule C, you have to go through this long, arduous process of DCAS, and you have to fill out all this paperwork and go, this goes back to the Christine Quinn era, when there was that slush fund scandal. Yeah. So everybody has to fill out this paperwork, and a lot of the stuff in the paperwork is not really relevant to veteran organizations. Because most veteran organizations, like uh, give an example, in Queens, you know, or even here in the Bronx, like they use the money for like upkeep of monuments and parades or educational purposes. So it's not a lot. It's not like hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's maybe like three thousand five hundred dollars to like five thousand dollars. So what we're pushing for is to try to get um, the city or the administration to allow 
um, DCAT, DCAS, or DBS to put somebody, put a procurement officer into the Department of Veteran Services. So that way, when the veteran organizations are, are filing for that money, they, they don't have to go through DCAS and the whole process again, they can just go through DBS. Will that happen? I don't know, but we're gonna, we're gonna try and see if we can make that happen you know, as we move along. So again, preliminary budget is coming. And you know, again, we we look at it as, as I said before, with the with the new tax laws coming into effect, and the state running a deficit. And if you heard the state of the city or some of it, like you know, the, some of the deficits coming perhaps to HUD or to like NYSHA or other places, we don't know where the money is going to go. On. So some money for veterans, particularly in the Veterans Initiative, may disappear or may be cut. We're going to try to hold the line, so we'll see how it goes, and I certainly will keep everybody informed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I remember reading uh, in your apartment years ago on the other side of town. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Before you continue, if a real association wanted to have somebody come out and tell them what the benefits are, would they have somebody available to do that? If they were invited to a real meeting? I can certainly ask the question. I just know that for this for this event that they want to put together, yeah, well, that's for the yeah. veterans themselves. Yeah, and the realtors need to know the information. Well, I mean, that was the, we did focus on that. We did have a discussion about that because the thought was, well, you know, we need to ed educate the realtors <coughs> right. in terms of what the benefit. And if, in fact, if you go back and look at the New York Times article from a couple of years ago, <coughs> that was the main problem. A lot of the realtors have no. If yeah. we lived in Florida, no problem. Yeah, but rather than New York, a lot of those no meeting. You need one exactly. or two people to go to a realtor's meeting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rather than mixing them. Well, I'll certainly mm -hmm. ask, I'll yeah. ask um, the question. Yeah. Oh, should I stand up this one? No. I'm actually on the board of realtors, um, oh, the association for Hudson Haven Board of Realtors. And we cover the Bronx, Westchester, Dutchess, Ocean, Rockland counties. Um, there's a large group. Was mm -hmm. very familiar with all the paperwork that's yes. necessary to be done. Mm -hmm. And um, if you wanted to give me a card, and yeah. we can match everything. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, yes. As, um, I don't know if you know David Nesman. Yeah. Um, we, I, you know, I, I will have to talk offline. Um, all I will say to you is. Um, we, and when I say we, I mean like the VA and DDS have made the point not to work with David Nesman. Yeah. His focus and is not veterans' paperwork. So, if I, you I, would, I would have to talk to you offline about One of the questions is, is do you understand veterans' paperwork? Yeah. Because I, I went to a workshop that, in case anybody wanted to David Nesman, he's the president of the Veterans Home Buyers Network, so, you know. I would just inquire, you know, maybe make connections or something. So, uh, you can skip that step. Yeah, a lot of we, uh, like we, uh, I will tell you, a lot of us uh, try to avoid David. And, and, it, and it, it's difficult. God, it's better to be the a separate discussion. Yeah, yeah it would have to be a separate discussion as to why. It just, I will tell you that the prior commissioner uh, confronted him about certain issues and certain items in his. Uh, <coughs> Portfolio, so to speak. And so. Yes, sir. I'm just curious. I mean, we focus a lot on veterans who are like who are below the threshold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We focus a lot on the veterans who you know require assistance and so forth in housing. What about those veterans who come in the gray area? Uh, they make too much for assistance, but let's face it. You know, they don't make 40 times the income to afford the average New York City apartment on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, like someone like me who's in that area, where I make too much for assistance, but at the same time, going out there, renting an apartment on the market on my own is, no matter where I move, it's going to be, it's going to eat a huge chunk of me. Everyone is an individual. Sometimes you can make $150,000 and have the family number and then be able to get the assistance for down payment and closing costs, plus use your stipend. I'm single with no kids, so. Mm. But then you can use, have you used your stipend? Can you say anything on the phone? No, I'll worry about that at all. So then let's talk. Yeah, I make too much for any kind of assistance, but not enough to get in place on my own. That's not true as a veteran. So 
definitely you need to talk to the right people. And I can help you with that. Exactly. Yeah. Do you agree with anything? No, no, no. I was just saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I wanted to stress to the veterans that are seeking homes and this 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 housing market is very volatile in New York City and it's not friendly to veterans and about 40 50 years ago I know veterans and I've met them through my various times in the hospital where it was much different you you had more accessibility right now we've got too many roadblocks in terms of getting that changed it's not going to happen with the state unless they allow it through the governor or through the budget. It's going to have to be federal through Congress. So it's like when Peter says that he's going to check on an issue about what's going on, there, there's, there's a lot of things that need to be asked. It's not just what, what you're going to do. It's, this is very bad. We, we're actually in limbo with a city administration that just recently we found out that they had money in NYCHA and they cut it and then he wanted to know why it was blaming it on the administration. So we, we're going to have a lot of problems. So we're going to have to address that through uh, our community outreach with elected officials in Washington. Thank you. Javier, uh, have a question. Yes. You gave me this card about a project that's coming up. I know we also have theater of war, which is going to be shown downstairs here. You want to tell us about your Yeah, sure. I'll tell you guys about this and a few other things. And I, I'm certainly going to make it quick. Um, so the first event I want to tell you guys is the Vietnam Veterans Day. It's coming up uh, March 24th. So the organization I'm associated with is United War Veterans Council. They produce the Veterans Day Parade. They also produce this, and which is very, very uh, well planned and, and thought out. And um, So essentially that day, from 8.30 to 12, there will be a small march in the morning from the Korean War Veterans in Brooklyn to the Vietnam War veterans downtown in Manhattan Island. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then after that is the reading of the names of the bullet, and then after that is, is the rep uh, laying ceremony. So that's one of the events. Um, I can put it on Facebook, the flyer, but if you really want to get the detail, uh, I can forward it to you the email. So this, I started working, working this week for this organization, the Patent Veteran Project. Um, it's ran by a gentleman named ben, ben, Benjamin Patton. He's the grandson of George Patton and the son of George Patton. Um, he's a really cool guy. The, the work is, is, is quite innovative, but also very simple. It helps veterans cope with, with BTS through filmmaking and storytelling. Um, and there's an event coming up actually in the Bronx VA. Um, I believe it's March 18th, but I have to get back to you on that. Essentially, he did it last year. Yes, yes. He so, did, I think last year. He did it last year. At the VA. Yes. And it was very, very well received. This is the second one. And so he has over uh, 50 project workshops all over the country. And after each workshop, a veteran is selected to create their own film. Uh, and it's perfect. So it's, it's amazing. I'll give this out to you. I started working with it this week, but it's an amazing organization. Um, the third uh, event I want to tell you guys about is the Intrepid. He's doing a few events in March. Mm. There is a lot of lunches and a lot of dinners followed by films and screenings. There's one on March 9th. It's the lunch followed by Out of My Head, Out of My Head, which is a um, it's a movie about migraines. Uh, and then March 21st is actually they close the, the traffic population and only open it for veterans. So they get to go a night tour, they get free dinner, and then they also have a movie. That's March 21st. And then the last event is for the younger vets. It's called Sierra Club Military Outdoors. And they're a really cool program. They take young vets out camping in the Catskills and um, for a whole weekend. So I'm doing it this weekend. And it's, 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 they call it cold weather training. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart. I'm starting to regret it because I was born in the Caribbean. <laughs> What's the age for that? The age? Yeah. I'd have to get back to you. They do have a waiver for kids, but I would guess it's, it's for veterans, so don't. Yes. No, that, that's what I'm asking because uh, I'm between young and, and old. I'm, not, I'm in that like gray barrier where people look at me like, oh, you're, you're too young. I'm an adult. And then they're like, well, you're an old man. You're, you're going to be 43. I think you can do it right now. So, 
Um, so those are the four events. I know I spoke very quickly, but just connect with me afterwards and I can forward you some of these events. And uh, I'll be this year. Yeah, I'll be here and then after they come out, just stay quiet. Cool. Yeah, this is one of the out of my head film is part of the um, disability film festival. So I mean, that's part of that festival. They hold it like throughout the city. Mm -hmm. So it's just part of the part, you know, it, that's where that really wants to film there. Great, thank you. Yeah, worthwhile stuff. And I got to give Joe Rondo a quick shout out because he's doing such great work with the secret. That's which I was in for a gazillion years, and I think we have a responsibility to our young people to, uh, you know, not make them stand at attention and crazy stuff, but teach them a little bit of respect and drill teams and command. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful stuff. Oh, so they still have the, the bass drum that I play. Mm -hmm. I thought it was this big, now it's just about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 um, from, yeah. from uh, as far as, I kind of spoke about different things that I was doing. I want to bring it back to the American Legion very quick. Uh, two points. Uh, one, also, I see Commander uh, Total the Crown hiding back there. So it was back in the United States. Commander Total the Crown. Just very quick. To go back to something that Tony mentioned earlier that I thought about while I was sitting there that I want to clarify. Uh, any veteran that is having surgery at the Bronx VA Medical Center, has the ability to come in if, uh, uh, the day before, and they do have the VA Medical Center on the fourth floor, same floor that I work on. The fourth floor has what's called Hoptel. It's like a hotel, but in a hospital hotel, Hoptel. Mm -hmm. So um, any of your, either yourself or any of your loved ones that are a veteran that's gonna have some type of ambulatory next day surgery can come in the night before. Stay in the hotel, uh, which is basically college dorm style mm -hmm. living. Don't, don't get all excited. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Full time your own. But we do have this. And part of the nice part about this is we had it uh, all along. It was being run under the VA police. But fortunately, volunteer services last year had the insight or the foresight to take it over. So they're kind of running and managing, so they're getting the experience when it comes time to shift over to, uh, to Fisher House. Uh, now, for the long-term stuff, uh, we're being fed patients from as far away as Philadelphia, uh, East Orange, New Jersey, Albany, New York. You know, we're, we're fed in um, on the context of uh, the kidney transplants. We're the regional source of kidney transplants, the medical director himself is a kidney doctor. He's a specialist in that. He not only sees patients on a regular basis, has a regular, you know, once a week patient count, uh, but he also does surgery. So he's not just an administrator. So I think that gives a totally different dynamic and different perspective in understanding everyone who walks through the door. I'm not defending him, I'm just stating pure fact. Um, now, for the patients like that uh, are going to be here for 30 days, you know, receive a kidney transplant, uh, and then have to be monitored on a daily basis, those folks are being billeted currently up at uh, Cross County Shopping Center. The, uh, there's a hotel up there. I can't think of the name of it. But there is a hotel at the Cross County Shopping Center, and that's where we're billeting them, so they're relatively close. You know, families can travel back and forth between the VA. It's, what, three, four exits on 87? Right. Um, so I don't want you to think 87. nothing exists. We do have things in place that we're working with, but obviously the Fisher House would be the absolute prime way to conduct business with families. Um, so we have not only, usually uh, we're looking for uh, greater than 50 miles, you know, on the uh, hot tell, you know, uh, so if you're coming, let's say, out of Staten Island, yeah, we understand it might be less than 50 miles, but it might take you six hours to get to us. So we'll work with you on that context. But usually it's greater than 50 miles is the uh, parameter um, for the hotel, and I have no idea how we're going to approach the uh, Fisher House. We don't want, we want to make it clear that this is not 
you know, free room and board for a weekend getaway. <coughs> you know, that's not the concept of what this is. This is so, you know, you and or your family could be close to you for medical reasons. It's, it's similar to what they do at the uh, campus, uh, campus center at St. Jude's and well, so on. Yeah. Right, it's, you know, it's for mm -hmm. the immediate family or patients that are seeking care at the facility. Mm -hmm. You know, specific specialized care. And the, the, and the hotel, the doctor or your social worker has to authorize it. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, you're checking in for the day. <clears throat> um, and the last thing, the Legion uh, on the Legion side and on the Community Board 10 side, which I'm grateful to be part of, um, the Legion recently realized I went to the ADAP training because of my post is licensed premise uh, on the state liquor authority, so I went to the ADAP training. And while I was there, I wrote that the, uh, I met the, Sharif, 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 Sharif. Yeah. Um, uh, she, she, she told me about the Frog's Neck Cap, which is Community Action Partnership. Um, I'm embarrassed to say up until today, Commander, uh, the American Legion was not on there. I don't know how that happened. I asked her, she says we were there many years ago and it kind of fell off, but we are back. We are back, Commander. Can I support your diocese? Right. Yeah. I don't think I speak of once. Yeah. It's important for <laughs> us all. I mean, yeah, we're all asking for something, whether it's Veterans Fair or whether it's, uh, you know, help with the VA or whether it's golf carts. Or we're all looking uh, to help each other, but we also have to look at the support here. What is the board doing? Um, does the board need our support? And I, I say this because I've been to the meetings with the. Uh, like authority issues, you know, if the community needs your help, you know, the community has an issue, you need to be the community's voice there and support what the board's doing. So it's a two-way street, and that's all I want to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Patrick Crusoe from the board is a, a member of the uh, Drugs Net Community yes. Partnership, and what they do is they go around and they make sure that they think of the bars that promise they can sell drinks to kids, and they can sell cigarettes to kids, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, you know. I, I just forgot to announce one more thing. So Hard House Commons announced that the um, Iron Workers Local 40, 361 in New York City is now accepting applications for its apprenticeship program. So if anybody's interested, they, uh, they say military veterans are encouraged to apply. So if anybody's interested, mm -hmm. make sure you go to the Hard House Commons website. And it's listed there in the job section. So your friends. Okay. Um. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I mean. Just one thing. I wanted to let everyone know. I I went to um, I went to the uh, chapter twenty three at the uh, VA the DAV's uh, chapter meeting, and I could tell you that I did get to speak to the uh, to the members. And I let them know about the issue of the elders and the young veterans needing to communicate. I also told them that I want them to come and to reach out and come to community board 10 meetings. I know they also do meetings at community board seven. Uh, a lot of people were very curious. I know that because of the weather, we probably, we probably would need a bigger room. But there are people that are interested because there's really a, a big gap here that we're going to have to work on. But that's all I want to say. I don't want to get into any details. I just wanted everyone to know that reaching out to other Legion posts and, 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 and the, the veterans at, at the VA, Chapter 23, the disabled veterans, it was actually a great experience because I got to see veterans that I normally don't see. And if I think my life has been a little tough, they certainly showed me that who fighters are. So. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll get them more engaged to come and we work with them. And certainly, it's kind of um, kind of our own fault. We did it to ourselves, so we have a lot of work to do. All right. Yes. Well, we do have a big room downstairs. Yes. Um, we are trying to start <coughs> here um, at uh, Sammy and Post, a shuffleboard club. Yeah. So, if you're interested. <laughs> We'll um, take you to sign up. That's our shuffleboard table. Oh, yes. Um, and there's one other in the Bronx, and so we're looking to <coughs> do a little competition. Um, tomorrow night, we have ladies' night. Men are more than welcome, 6 <laughs> to 12. And then um, in City Island, there's the pig knuckle party. If you want, you can sign up. There's a sign-up sheet on the door. Meeting here at 5 o'clock. And uh, then you guys can return to your ladies. And the pig knuckle, Ben's thingy is that? Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here. Okay. Well,
whoever wants to meet here and to, right. on the sign up, they're putting together a transportation. We try to have some fun. Uh, Bob mentioned that the last board meeting, April 4th, and I just saw a flyer, so it's at 10 o'clock and 11, will be a dedication of the seal from the World Trade Center um, at the Redwood Club, which is down the end of Shurs Avenue, all the way down the end by, by you. Um, so I think on this side, it's a, a nice thing to go to. Um, sadly, but nice thing. Okay, thank you. Everybody should know uh, Memorial Day falls on May 28th this year. There are several events that I'm sure Tony will mention. Uh, Peace Memorial, Victory Memorial, Van Ness. The week before, in Washington, D.C., there's an annual event called the GI Film Festival. If you've never attended the GI Film Festival, it's a quick train ride down. I highly recommend it, especially if you're a veteran activist, because there are dozens um, they're, they're shortening it now that they're in their 12th year, but documentaries of great work that's going on throughout the nation, um, and just important information. It's the 23rd and the 24th of May. And so usually it's a, it's a four day process, but the, uh, the founders are in Japan uh, helping with the USO tour. So they shortened it this year, um, but it's always uh, something new and different, and it's great information. So look it up online, GI Film Festival, Get all the information that you need and, um, and support them. Thank you. We were in that. They had a, our museum over here. We had a young man make a film. Um, Everybody knows about the uh, the Veterans uh, Museum that's in Dormy's funeral home, correct? Right? We didn't win. Um, probably because I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows about the uh, VFT, Veterans of Film and Television. For those who want to get involved in film and television, uh, I'll get the exact information and contact information and I'll forward it to Tony. But uh, they basically help veteran filmmakers in front of the camera, behind the camera. Uh, if you're interested in film and television, they're a great organization as well. They work hand in hand with the, the GI Film Festival. A lot of their material is, uh, is supplied from there each year. So I'll, I'll get that information to you, Tony. So, yes, John. Well, since February is coming to an end, um, I just want to announce that registration has been low for the cadets this year. And if anybody's got children or grandchildren nine years and older, um, registration is open. We meet Friday nights and Saturday mornings at Holy Family School on Castle Hill Avenue. Um, like Tony said, he was a member when he was young. You know, I, I started in the program when I was 10 years old. Javi was a volunteer with us for a while. Um, this program has helped hundreds of kids grow up and made their transition into the military a lot easier. I served six years in the Marines with the help of being a cadet, currently serving in the New York Guard. I have uh, one of my former cadets just inform me uh, today that he's been selected for a promotion to staff sergeant in the U.S. Army. I got another cadet who will be graduating in two weeks from now from uh, Marine Corps School of Infantry. So, you know, this, this is like some of the things that the cadets prepare these kids for. Uh, also, if any, any adults are interested in volunteering, mentoring these kids, we're always looking for new staff members as well. Thank you. It is a worthwhile thing. Um, if it goes before the full board, it probably will pass. Next time around, we're going to have some more meetings than usual. Uh, and in March, next time around, we'll have elections, so we're sick and tired of hearing the Okay, so that's that's what's coming down the board. We should be more. Again, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. You guys make me look good because this is a great showing. So, don't get me. Are you? Let me know before you close out. I don't know if anyone else has anything. Go ahead. Um, for those that may not be familiar with the uh, Vet Center program, yeah. So, uh, so the Department of Veterans Affairs. Everybody knows about the benefit side, the disability checks, uh, the home loan. Everyone obviously knows about the VA hospital and the clinics. Uh, we're, I like to say, the little known secret of the VA. Uh, we're almost like the special unit, you know, those of us that were in the military, you think of the SEALs, you think of uh, SF. The Vet Center program has been around since 1979, and uh, we were a direct result for the need of services for Vietnam veterans. Okay, those returning home from combat, that was a transition both from military to civilian life, but they transition from their, their career, their trauma, 
okay? Um, and even the large VA, big VA, sometimes has a problem knowing and or remembering who we are. So I just want to make it known that the Vet Center program is open to all veterans that have served in a combat area, okay, from any era, as well as any veteran that may have experienced trauma. And trauma can be a lot of different things, but specifically trauma while in the military. Uh, you know, without getting into too much personal information, you can discuss uh, with me, or you can go to the Vet Center. I'm formerly of the Bronx Vet Center, which uh, some of uh, everyone here knows me from there. I'm now the office manager for the Queens Vet Center, which is in Woodhaven, Queens. And where was the Bronx one? Bronx Vet Center is on uh, Morris Avenue between 190th and Corbin Road. So not that far from the Bronx VA. Um, and again, it's a resource. It's designed to be community-based. It's completely separate and confidential from the VA Medical Center. All treatment and services conducted on the premises is completely confidential, even from the main VA. Okay, you have to give written specific instructions and permission for your records to be released. Okay, so we see active duty service members, we see combat veterans, families with bereavement cases, uh, marriage and family therapists, children of deployed uh, family members, um, and then we also see a large component of active federal employees because of the confidentiality. You know, veterans work within the VA. I'm a veteran, eight years Army, Iraq 2003, 2004. And it's someplace where it's supposed to be the place you go where we understand what it is to be a veteran. Okay. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to talk to me. Um, the easiest one to find in the VA. Keith.Rivera at VA.gov. I'm the only one in all the VA. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> they don't mind. Yeah. It's not Keith Rivera, number 72 at VA. <laughs> Keith.Rivera. So, feel free to talk to me. And I'm here as long as you need to. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I just want to mention our one more thing is Colonel Bill Jim. Our son had a serious accident. That's why Colonel Jim's not here tonight. So, I think he's okay. I think he's out of emergency. Still in the hospital, but he was in the vehicle accident, so it's not, not fun. So that's why Colonel Bilch is not here tonight, so we remember him uh, in the So, uh, can we all rise for one moment, uh, please? Before we leave, as we thought, Father of Mankind, because of the nation, we need to spend time to remember our veterans. May they be remembered as good soldiers who want to be fighting a just cause. For the real America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, the America worth fighting for. Uh, God of mercy, whichever God we believe in, please remember our veterans suffering from physical and mental disabilities. Cheer them and their families. Amen. 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 Thank you so much again, guys. Appreciate it. Come on, business cards. Uh,